Today I have a quick tutorial for you about how to take lizard pose, which is this uh, often taught as a passive deep end range stretch and turn it into a really functional movement. So this kind of translating between uh, classical yoga postures that have been historically taught as passive into active functional movements, I think is the future of yoga. So let's get uh, a start. So lizard pose, for those who don't know, both hands are typically placed on the inside of your front leg. Back knee can be down on the ground or up off the ground, and it's often taught in a way that encourages elbows down or even forehead down and the deepest possible range of motion between your front hip and your back hip. And you can see that that is an end range, passive range of motion. So here's a really functional movement. I've set up the chair, I've set up a couple of blocks here. Very, very often we might be asked to pick up something heavy and we might um, use basically the hip hinge and this half kneeling position to pull something heavy close to our center of gravity before standing up, right? So what you can do is you can teach Lizard pose with that exact range of motion and stability in mind. So if you have access to a, a chair in your yoga practice space or in your teaching space, you can place the forearms on the chair, hug that front knee in, try to get the isometric inner thigh work, and you can also just slide forward and back, making lizard into this really dynamic shape. So that you're using the muscles, you're using the range of mus motion rather than just hanging in it. You can also practice, let's say you don't have access to a chair, we won't be able to slide quite so well, um, but you could put your hands on a two blocks in the tall position and um, just encourage isometrics in this position or encourage pouring the weight into the front foot, leaning back, pouring and leaning back. See, most of the motion is coming from my hip and very little from my spine. And this is really simple, but a lot of people need this. You can also take it from here, step the other foot back and make it a really dynamic strength and almost like agility shape that still embodies that original flavor of lizard. And then of course you can turn it into a restorative shape and again, I would bring the floor to you, restorative meaning restorative for your nervous system. I would actually use like a blanket and any kind of props that you had available to you to both cushion the back knee and bring the surface to you. But you can get some um, nervous system relief by positioning yourself in lizard in a restorative supportive shape where you don't feel a stretch. Now, I don't happen to feel a stretch here. It doesn't mean that most people won't. So know your audience. Don't do this maybe in the beginning of your practice, but towards the end, know your audience or your body. And then last thing, you can do one more kind of dynamic sliding action if you don't happen to have a chair and you would need to use your floor. So this is gonna look a little bulky for a moment. I'm gonna roll this up either using a towel or blanket, or as I suggested before the blocks, you can also slide and pull back. Now I have quite a bit of friction between the weight in my hands and the block. So I'm also getting a bit of core and scapular and shoulder stability as I do this. Very different from the lazy lizard that you might have seen. So I hope those ideas give you some food for thought on how to translate this passively taught pose into a really, really active pose that will then help improve the function of people's lives. For more on these, more of these types of tutorials, go to yogaanatomyacademy.com. 
My name is Dr. Arielle Foster. I'm a physical therapist and yoga teacher based in Washington, DC. And thanks for watching.